Okay, in this video, we're actually going to look at how ATP is synthesized directly. Okay, so recall that in the last video, what we looked at was we actually looked at the mechanism of how the, uh, the rotor actually spins. And actually, the, the subunit that's actually spinning is going to be the gamma subunit. So the gamma subunit is, or let's, let's, let's not use spinning, let's use rotating. The gamma subunit is rotating, and the gamma subunit is just that shaft that goes through the middle of the, there's the middle of the alpha three, beta three spheroid, spheroid, and that's just in the center, um, or the excuse me, the alpha two, alpha three, beta three spheroid encircles the gamma shaft in the middle. Okay, now here's what we have to look at, right? The alpha-3, beta-3 spheroid is part of the stator. It's not actually moving. It's the gamma subunit that um, essentially is doing the rotation. So let, let's, let's think about this. If I have, I'm going to draw a hexagon. And you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. And actually, let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. Okay, and then let me label these. This will be alpha, beta, alpha, beta, alpha, beta. And this is essentially what it looks like, right? Well, essentially, depending on the position of the gamma shaft, so if you, if you were to picture the gamma shaft, it's going to be running through the center right here. Depending on the, the, the position of the gamma shaft relative to each individual subunit, it changes that subunit's catalytic activity, or, or in some cases, its binding activity. Well, what do we mean? Well, let's, let's, let's do this, and I'm going to draw this in the same conformation that I did in this picture. Okay, and let me... You do it like this. Okay. It turns out that in one of these units, and specifically it's the, it's the beta in which the binding occurs, it's the beta subunit where the binding occurs, but it turns out that in one of these subunits, and again, this is this is at one at one particular position of the gamma shaft. And you'll see what I mean. So here's the gamma shaft in the middle. And maybe, maybe here the gamma shaft looks like this. Maybe here it looks like this, right? And here it doesn't have anything. You'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. But maybe in this position, maybe this position when, when this one line is here, it's good at binding ADP and it's good at binding phosphate, right? But at the same time, in the next subunit, maybe where there's two of these lines, that's actually where the ligation of ADP to phosphate occurs, so you have bound ATP, right? And at the same time, in this subunit, or this in this beta subunit, where there's no none of these yellow lines, this is as in a particular conformation where ATP leaves, right? Where ATP leaves. So what did I just say? Well, at, when, when the gamma shaft rotates, or, or it's in a particular conformation with respect to the alpha-3, beta-3 spheroid, each individual part of the spheroid has a different activity. Okay, so now, and if you may be able to see where I'm going with this right now, let me go ahead and draw this again. And might I remind you, it's the it's the gamma shaft that's rotating. So, so in other words, if I were to label this alpha beta subunit one, alpha beta subunit two, alpha beta subunit three, then it would be the same thing here, right? It would be the same thing there. So if the gamma shaft rotates, let's say it rotates. Um, Let's say it rotates like this. So now the two are right there. The one is here and the zero is here. And actually, let me make sure I did that right. Um, yeah. Well, hold on. Let me let me take a look at it real quick. Um, let, let me do it this way. Um, let me actually rotate it a different way. Let me rotate so this is here, this is there, and and, the, and none of them are here. Okay, that's actually how it needs to be. Okay, so 
in in the first case, this particular subunit in in this conformation of the gamma shaft was good at binding ADP and phosphate. But when the gamma shaft rotates, it essentially changes its activity because there's a change in conformation, right? And so now the ATP or ADP and phosphate ligation occurs. So now there's bound ATP there. Well, when when there was none of these yellow lines in here, ATP was good at leaving. So here there was ATP bound. Now it's going to leave, right? And then where there was one of these things, right? That was good at binding ADP and phosphate. So now this one originally had an ATP, but it left. Now it's going to have a bound ADP and a phosphate, right? I hope this makes sense so far. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. So I'm going to draw it the same way. Same lines. And again, this is the same spheroid subunit, this is the same spheroid subunit, and this is the same one as in this picture. Okay, but the gamma shaft is rotating, so the old one line was here, then it's here, so now it's here, right? Then the two were here, then it was here, so now, wait, did I do that right? One goes back here, yeah, and the two were here, then they went here, so the two are now here, right? And then the none are in the one that faces the two, right? So let's look at this, right? In this one, we had bound ATP, right? We had bound ATP. Well, in the one that case where we had zero of the yellow lines, that was where ATP left. So there was bound ATP, now ATP dissociates. ATP dissociates. Well, in this one, ATP dissociated, right? But now it's got this, this one line, right? So we know that it's good at binding ADP and phosphate now. And remember, these are just changes in conformation that change the activity of the subunit. And this one had ADP and phosphate. Now it has the two, so it ligates them together and forms ATP, so you have bound ATP. So what are we seeing? Well, let's take, let, let, let's take, the, let, let's take for instance, the second spheroid subunit. So this will be for spheroid subunit two. Let's look at the order at which some things are happening. So first I put together ADP and phosphate, right? And then I change conformation, so I'll put CC for change conformation. And remember, it's with respect to the gamma subunit. And then you have ATP bound. So ATP is now bound in the site, but now the gamma shaft is in a different position relative to the second subunit of the spheroid, right? And then, and then ATP dissociates, and all you're left with is the synthase at that point. So the ATP dissociates. And it turns out that actually, believe it or not, the ATP dissociation is actually the rate-determining step of ATP synthase. But if you notice what's happening, the gamma shaft is rotating relative to the alpha-3, beta-3 spheroid, right? So if I was to come over here, right? We could arbitrarily, well, we already, we already named it. This is the one, this is the two, and this is the three, right? So the gamma shaft is rotating relative to the um, alpha-3, beta-3 spheroid. In fact, the alpha-3, beta-3 spheroid is not moving at all. And so as a result, we term this part of the stator, the stator. It's not moving. The gamma shaft is what's moving, and so that is part of the rotor. And so you can think about it, the, the, the gamma shaft is rotating against the spheroid subunits, right? And depending on which conformation, or depending on which, um, which well, depending on which part of the gamma shaft is against which particular part of the spheroid, it changes the conformation enough to where it changes the activity of that particular subunit of the spheroid. Right? So in this case, right here, right there, this, the gamma shaft was situated such that this particular um, subunit was, was at that point good at binding ADP and phosphate. And then, oops, and then when I rotated the gamma shaft one turn, or 120 degrees, it changed it so now it's good at ligating them together. So now we have ATP. And then I rotate the gamma shaft another 120 degrees, 
and then the ATP dissociates. And what you would find is you could do that for all three of these different alpha-3, beta-3 um, spheroid sections, right? So I hope this makes sense. Remember, the gamma shaft is what's rotating. The spheroid, the alpha and beta subunits, are just sitting there. And so you can sort of think of it as like the gamma shaft is, is grinding against the alpha-3, beta-3 spheroid. It's rotating against it. And depending on which part of the gamma shaft is against the spheroid, it changes the conformation of the spheroid to where it changes the activity of what it's doing. And another thing, like I mentioned, it's worth saying is that the actual rate determining step of ATP synthase is the actual dissociation of ATP. That's the slowest step and therefore rate determining. So I hoped this video helped. Um, and this basically concludes our, our, um, our study of the respiratory chain. And we may come back and do some other videos of various other things, but I think it's worth mentioning now. What was the ultimate goal of putting or, or making all that NADH and all that FADH2? Well, the, the, the ultimate goal of all those things was to fuel um, the pumping of protons, right? So protons were pumped by NAD, NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase. They were pumped by cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase and cytochrome C oxidase, right? Um, 4, 4, and 2, respectively, right? And so the pumping of protons powered the rotation of the rotor in ATP synthase. And then, of course, we're synthesizing ATP. So that is the ultimate goal. That is the ultimate goal of making NADH and FADH2. It's to, it's to basically power the pumping of protons. And, and of course, that's going to power ATP synthase to make ATP. So I hope this video helped you get a better understanding of exactly what the rotor is. And like I mentioned, this concludes the respiratory chain. We may come back and do a few other videos here and there, but I think now you should have a pretty good understanding of the respiratory chain. See you in the next video.